Hi folks, we're back cutting through the matrix and don't forget that uh, control, mass control, control of the masses has always been so important for those in, in charge. And there's many ways, of course, I've used in the past to keep people uh, behaving themselves in an authorized fashion by the state and so on. But uh, the big push, of course, for an internet, etc. And, and not only that, you maybe think about anything that gives you the same data, 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 is standardizing all your thoughts across. So that's why you all, you all prattle about the same things. You've got standardized news across the world, and you think you've been told the truth, and you'll have conversations thinking you're in all nice conversations. You won't argue because you'll be given the same, the same data. It doesn't mean truth or facts, you're just data. Uh, and of course, that's the way the elite want it to be. So, Folk can't think for themselves or question it. In fact, they have no reason to. They don't know they've been brought up in a world of mass control by rather nasty people. But, of course, this article here goes into mind control, basically, and uh, there's a, t- a couple of articles out on it, too, which is really acclimatizing you to the fact that, that it's coming, but national fact is already here. Uh, but it says, uh, it looks like Spock and Darth Vader may have come some competition in the mind control stakes. Researchers in the U.S. claim to have discovered the secret to mind control by creating the world's first ever human-to-human brain interface. Now, that's not true, because if you go into the history of a computer brain interface, you'll find that they were doing this hardwired, mind you, uh, back in Tavistock, but definitely in Sweden as well. Sweden were using, was using prisoners back in the 1970s and hardwiring them right into computers to try to see if someone else could control them from a distance. But uh, this is a repetition thing to get used to the fact that it's here, you see. And it says, using electrical brain recordings in a form of magnetic stimulation, Rajesh Rayo sent a brain signal to Andrea Stockholm on the other side of the Washington University campus, causing Stuko's finger to move on a keyboard. They can do a lot more than, than move your finger, folks. You can do an awful lot more. I've gone into the, the works of um, Persinger, for instance, Professor Persinger, who's worked with DARPA and he's worked with the CIA and all the rest of the big boys. And he's up here in Canada, actually, working at a university. He's on his own floor to himself, and I'm sure he's, he's still into this. He actually says it would be great when we all live in the same field, this, like this, this energy field of the, the, the net, and we'll all have each other's thoughts, etc., etc., and we'll feel the pain of others across the world. you probably feel the people in Gaza, for instance, when they get burned by phosphorus, things like that. But anyway... It says here that um, the feat builds on research in which electrical signals generated from one brain are translated by a computer into commands that can move a mechanical arm or a computer cursor, etc., etc. Now, getting back to Persinger, he really, really is, is an, an advocate of all this stuff. He, he worked with a Corbin helmet, remember, uh, that was used back in the 60s and 70s in Canada in some of the universities, where it could simulate, uh, if you put this helmet on your head, through electrical and magnetic um, frequencies on the surface of your brain, it could actually give you experiences like LSD uh, or various other drugs as well. So you don't have to have directly uh, direct wiring into the brain anyway. And believe you me, that helmet, that, that, that carbon helmet, has, was way advanced today, believe you me, with DARPA and the rest of them, than it ever was back then. But... Um, and they've been into this for an awful long time. One day you'll be walking down the street and something will happen. Next thing you know, you'll be grabbed and accused of killing someone and you have no recollection of it even happening at all. What, a, what an incredible tool it's going to be for the big boys because everything that's done and used in science always is done for military uh, purposes uh, initially. Always. Always, folks. And that's generally where the funding comes from, from you, of course, through these organizations into creating this for military applications. And also, what a great method of getting rid of anybody uh, uh, who is putting out truth even down the road as to disgrace them in some incredible way in the street or whatever. They have no recollection of what, what happens. And, and of course, it's so simple. It's an invisible technology. Uh, and it's going to be so plausible when they put out their propaganda. That's why this person went crazy in the street. Very, very simple stuff, folks. Remember, too, what Charles Galton Darwin said the physicist and the, and the descendant of Charles Darwin, but he was a physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project, and he wrote the book uh, The Next Million Years, talking about the, the elite's right to go on, run the world uh, into the future, and how to to basically um, control the masses. He says, we'll use hormone hormones on the males and so on and feminize them. 
through their food and inoculations and so on. And and he went to different techniques of doing all of this stuff. And there you have it. I mean, uh, this was back in the 1950s, he wrote that book. Uh, that book was lauded by all the elites in the world, all the big organizations. And he said um, that it's the elite's right to go on into the future for themselves. He says, but we, the elite, must remain wild. He says, where we can control those down below, he said, we will remain uncontrolled. He says, we must be wild men because wild men are natural men. We'll be making decisions for survival, whereas the people down below will be unable to do that. He says, the state will be making all their decisions for them. It's worth reading the book, folks. Because these folks are not kidding, you know. And they have been doing what they said they'd do. Bertrand Russell talked about using, uh, putting the same kind of chemicals in, and to dumb you down as well, by the way, to attack the brain, in, in your food, in your water, it says, and even by the use of the needle, it's talking about vaccinations. These guys are not kidding. They, they all work with big international organizations of the ultra-elite.